Right, question three it says draw the graph of f of x plus two. Now notice the transformation now is in the bracket, okay? So this is your f of x here, of course, and now we want f of x plus two. So the transformation will be um, this shifted, but of course when it's in the bracket, you go the opposite way, okay? So you're gonna go in a negative direction, so minus two if you like. When you see plus two, you do minus two along the x axis. So if you go minus two, you've got to think about that there. That's the origin. So it's going to go back to, to minus two. This is going to shift to two. Think about where that's going to shift. Okay. So I'm going to draw my axes, and I'm going to be careful here to have a little bit more of the um, negative values for x on my on my new graph. Okay. Um, just to recognize that. So this will go, if you shift that back to, you end up there, two. Okay, two, zero. This minimum point, if you shift this back to, Take away two from that, you get zero, so it goes through there. Okay, so zero, and that will be minus four. Now the y value is unaffected, don't, don't forget. And then that's zero, the origin, so back two, you end up at minus two, which is about there, okay? So you've got minus two, zero. And you can draw your graph, okay? And that is f of x um, plus two, okay? Excellent. Then it says, given that the equation f of x plus 2 equals k has two real and distinct solutions, find the range of values of k. All right. Now, um, what we need to see is a different question to what we saw before. It's got two real and distinct solutions, right? But it's not saying here when it's equal to 0, okay? Because, of course, we know, you know, it equals 0 here, doesn't it? And it equals 0 here. So we've got two real and distinct solutions. We know all about that nonsense. But here it's saying, um, given that e equals to k, um, and it always has two real and distinct solutions, find the range of values of k. Well, it doesn't have to be here, doesn't it, where it's got two distinct solutions, two real and distinct solutions. It could be up here, couldn't it? If you notice up here, you've got, you've got two solutions here. So when we say e equals to k, it could equal to, let me just put a few lines in, it could equal to... To, to 4. So, so suppose that was 4 there, okay? You know, I'm just making this up, but if it was equal to 4, in other words, if k was equal to 4, okay, then you'd have two real distinct solutions. It doesn't have to be 4. It could be, it could be there. It could be 2, you know? But notice, again, you've got two solutions for it, okay? It could be anywhere. In fact, you could keep going, couldn't you? All the way to infinity. You'll always find two solutions, okay? And even down here, negative values, Okay, so, so when it, the point to, I want you to get is when it says equals to k here, we're talking about values on the y-axis, okay, here, okay, when it equals to these values here. That's what the, of course, that's what it means, isn't it? When you've got f of x, or f of x plus 2, the, the graph, when it equals to a value, the value is on the y-axis. So it's got two solutions. It's got two solutions here as well. The moment it stops having two solutions is here, of course, at the minimum. Because at the minimum, okay, minimum it actually only has one solution doesn't it or you could think of it as having two solutions but it's, it's repeated isn't it if you remember doing that it's repeated um we think of it as one solution yeah it'd be better it's easier to clearer to think of it as one solution so there it's no good less underneath here it's no good so anything above minus four is fine so we'd say k has got to be greater than minus four it can't be equal to minus four because it's got to be less than it, okay? It's got to be, sorry, it's got to be above it, so you get two solutions. Okay, so this one now, number four, f of x minus five. Now, remember, in the bracket, you do the opposite, so we're going to actually go plus five, okay, along the x-axis. So, <coughs> excuse me, for that, um, you, you're going to need quite a bit of um, x-axis, okay? Remember now, these graphs are not, like, drawn to scale perfectly, right? So don't worry, um, you know, just as long as it looks reasonably good. There, it's going to go along 5, so you end up there, 5, 0. Okay, this is going to be shifted along 5, so if you think about it, that will become 7. The y value stays as minus 4, and then shift that along 5, you get 9. 9, 0. Okay, so there's your graph there, something like that, anyway. It's not very well drawn, but it, it's okay. You've got the values in there, that's the main thing. Make sure the values are nice and clear. So it says then, given that the equation f of x minus 5 equals k has no real solution, so find the range of values of k. Now remember, as we saw before, if we're up here, that's no good. 
is if we take k to be 4 or whatever is there, right? That's no good because it's got two solutions. No good at all. We want no solutions. So if you think about it, k has got to be down here somewhere. Okay? k has got to be down here, isn't it? And there's no solutions. In fact, k has to be underneath that minimum point. Okay? It can't equal that minimum point because you'd have one solution. It's got to be underneath it. So k in this case has got to be less than minus 4. Okay? And we've answered our question.